Okay, I think we are heading in. Maybe, possibly. Cool, we are in. I have no idea if it's actually one o'clock or not, because once again, all of my devices say different times. Um, let's see. This says three minutes to, this says three minutes past. That says one minute past. Who knows? But here we are. Hopefully. Hopefully it's not too windy and people can see soon. Aha, there are people, hello, hi, hi, hi. Um, sorry, I, I think all of my watches say, well, watches, I have a watch. Everything says a different time, so I thought I'll just put it on around one o'clock and then we'll chill and then wait for people to arrive. Hi, Rach. Hello, hello, hello. Um, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Does everyone have water to stay hydrated? Hopefully it's not too loud and too windy. Um, it's, it's quite windy here today. <laughs> And my little plastic roof apparently does not block wind noise, so sorry if it gets a bit loud. I would turn the mic off, but I don't know how. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Cool. Just gonna hang on for maybe like a minute more to see if more people join and then we'll get going. I don't want to crack on until like we've got sort of maybe a, the solid base of the peeps who want to be here. Um, but if you happen to tune in to the live I did, I don't even know where we are now. Um, can't really hear the wind, awesome. Um, if you tuned into the Instagram live I did last week, um, this is the same premise as that. Um, that was like my test one to see if it was going to work and I think, I think it did. So we're going to do that. Um, oh dear, it really is getting windy. I hope it's not too windy later. Um, okay, shall we get cracking? So the plan today is to do a quick workshop in trusting your eyes. So a lot of drawing that we do, um, we we think that we're drawing what, what our eyes are seeing, but we're not. We make a lot of assumptions. So you'll see something in front of you and because we are constantly looking at stuff every day, your brain thinks it knows better and um, you stop looking. So the rule is you need to basically be looking at what you're drawing more than um, your page, if that makes sense. So everybody looks down when they're drawing but you should be looking up and this is to kind of show you how you should trust your eyes. So with that being said, I'm going to put a link here in the chat and I'm also going to put a picture here. So if this picture is too small, there's a link to the image that I'm going to be using in the chat now. Um, so that's what we're going to be drawing. So hopefully this is nice and clear. If it's not, the link is there for you. So this is what we're going to be drawing first. All you need is a piece of paper, a pen, a pencil, basically whatever you feel like drawing with. 
it really doesn't matter what it is, just as long as you can make a mark on a page. And this is what we're going to draw first. So no, no fancy tricks, just, just drawing. So the thing is as well, when you're drawing, don't feel like you need to, um, if you need some help, allow yourself to have some help. You have something in your hand that you can use to help you take measurements and things and to help you look at angles. So say, for example, you want to work out how long this ear is. Use your pen to help you mark, mark on your fingers. Use your finger to work out how long something is. Like there's nothing stopping you from doing that. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't use things to help you. Um, another trick is it's going to be hard to show you on camera, but if you're having trouble getting the angle of something, close one eye using your pen as well, line up the pen with the angle. So say I want to work out the angle of this ear using your one closed eye, point this in front of it and then bring it back across onto your page and you'll be able to get the angle by sort of making like a little transfer as it were. Okay, so I'm just going to get drawing. So again, try and be as accurate as you can be, but don't like punish yourself over it. So I'm drawing at a very strange angle here. <laughs> this is like halfway across the table. But we're going to see how accurate we can get this cat. Give him some little tufts. Yeah, tufts are important. So this kind of scribbly technique here I'm doing now is called scumbling. So hatching is where you do lines across. That's cross hatching. Scumbling is where you do scribbling. Stippling is where you do dots. So this kind of technique is called scumbling. Give you some, give you a little bit of texture on the old fluff. See, shall I zoom in a bit? Let's see if I can zoom without this all being terrible. There we go. That's a bit better. Okay, let's get the basic form down. So again, if you're having trouble with getting lines, close your one eye, line up with your line over here and then pull it back across your drawing and you can see if you've kind of got the right angles, if you know what's potting. Um, this is the main area that has scumbling, so this kind of scribbly technique over here. Um, I wanted to pick like a just a basic line drawing, well not a basic line drawing, but a line drawing just so we could focus on form. So form is one of the elements of art. Um, the question is can I remember what the other ones are off the top of my head? Line, shape, tone, texture, Wait, what are we? Line, shape, tone, texture, form, <laughs> color. I'm missing one. Line, shape, tone, texture, form, color, and, oh no, it'll come back to me. Anyway, so we're just focusing on um, line and form. Okay. So your aim here with this is number one, don't take this too seriously <laughs> and to just see if you can get like a basic layout for this cat. So if you've just tuned in, um, if this image isn't big enough for you, um, I've put the link to the image in the description, in the chat box. Um, so you can get a bigger Im uh, reference image if that helps. See, I can already tell that I'm off with my proportions quite drastically with this guy. Too much talking, not enough focusing. Okay, so let's see. You can always mark out as well. So like I'm going to do here with these two lines, I'm kind of like marking out where my key parts are going to go. So that's there, that's here. Let's see, his nose kind of falls around here-ish. And again, if 
it's it's sort of a bit different if you're doing it with line but um, normally you can break stuff down into shapes so if we were to be drawing this sort of as a realistic drawing adding shading and stuff into it um, I would say break it down into shapes so essentially he's a little oval with two triangles some overly eyes a triangly nose two ovals for his little like muzzly bit a little oval over there for the under bit and that's kind of his basic shape and then you can refine from there. It's irritating me now that I can't remember. Line, tone, form, shape, texture, color. My brain has gone completely. It's really frustrating. Who? I'm going to Google it. I can't. This is really irritating. How many years did I teach this for? Hello. Why, why is my phone not letting me Google stuff? <laughs> elements. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be so obvious. Elements of art. Line, shape, tone, texture, form, color. Value. No? Not important. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go back to drawing this. So let's get his eyes in. Because that has the window to the soul and all that. So when in doubt, make some squishy circles and those will make your cat eyes. Because you can see that's not a perfect circle, it's more of an oval. But I wanted to use this drawing as well just because I like how they've used different thicknesses of lines to help define different areas of this cat. Um, so the pen I'm using is quite a thin um, tipped fine liner. But if you're using something thicker, it'll probably come across looking a bit more like this reference image. Let's give him some shading down here. Um, He's got some texture up the middle of his nose. So is everyone drawing along to this or is this one of those um, here to watch kind of vibes? Well, the wind is really picking up now. Sorry if you can hear it. I mean, his nose far too large. Let's give him some texture up here. And his eye whiskers. looking cat like that's excellent so it's, it's sort of supposed to be challenging I wanted to do an image as well that wasn't perfectly symmetrical because um, like nothing really when you actually draw it has that perfectly symmetrical look to it but um, most of these like line images that I could find online are all face on which I didn't really feel was like the most helpful my cat is looking like he's seen some terrible things. <laughs> okay, so we all sort of need to get to a similar place. So I'm going to keep just fiddling with mine and maybe give us like five more minutes um, to all get to the next stage. So I don't know, maybe you want to like thumbs up or something in the comments if you're like, if you feel like your cat is done. Again, this doesn't need to be a perfect cat. This is just kind of like, do you have something that looks kind of like it is a cat? Does it have the main facial features? Have you given it the outside of a face? Does it have some eyes and some ears? Let's see, I'm just going to keep thickening up my lines now. Ooh, there's wind. Look at his chunky nose. <laughs> it's 
It irritates me that they haven't put the little um, doohickeys, I believe is the official term, the doohickeys that go, that the whiskers come out of on this side, when you're on this side. Straight up making these whiskers up. Okay. Oh my goodness, I've just remembered what the last thing is. This is irritating space. <laughs> uh, so those are your seven elements of art. Um, so while you're all finishing your drawings, I'm just gonna, oh wait, it's not in shot. There you go. <laughs> my horrific handwriting. So your seven elements of art, line, shape, tone, texture, form, color, and space. Those are essentially your building blocks. Those are your Lego bricks. Every piece of artwork you will ever look at, has ever been made, will ever be made in the future, is made up of these seven elements. How you put those elements together determines what an artwork looks like. Um, so we can focus on, like today I would say we're basically focusing on line and form. So form is how you make something look. The 3D elements, so shape say is a circle, the form is a sphere. Or shape is a triangle, form is a pyramid. Um, so form is 3D, shape is 2D, line obviously is a line, <laughs> but it can have different properties, so curvy lines, wavy lines, organic lines, thick lines, thin lines, that's how you build up different elements. Um, texture is pretty self-explanatory, like how does it feel, but in terms of us visually, it's how do we give something a, the, um, the illusion, the illusion of texture. So we generally do that through um, line. <laughs> so all of these kind of interplay. So here you can see I've created texture through my scumbling technique. Um, space refers to basically like how you create depth, so positive and negative space. So with this cat, the cat is the positive space and the background is the negative space. So negative space is what is kind of like surrounding stuff. Um, so if I'm looking at this desk, which I've now zoomed in on, but I'll zoom out paper is positive space and the background is the negative space. I won't do the principles of art with you because that's a whole other kettle of fish, but basically if you have a basic understanding of line, shape, tone, texture, form, colour and space, um, you can put together a painting or an artwork of any description. Okay, I'm calling my cat done, so are you guys ready to move on to the next part of this? stage two as it were the actual the actual sort of the the meaning behind doing this workshop sorry for my arm if you can see it i'm heading in for another link for you let's do it okay so I'm now putting a link into the chat if you're not using my reference drawing. So you're going to need another page or you can use the back of this one, but I'm going to use a new page and we are going to flip our cat. So he's now upside down. So the um, link in the chat should take you to an upside down picture of this cat. If this isn't big enough for you to see on your screen, <laughs> the cat looks a tad scary. Mine does too, actually. Like. He's definitely seen some things. Okay, I think I've zoomed in too much. Oh my goodness, the coughing from next door is getting significantly worse. Okay. So now we have an upside down cat. Why do we have an upside down cat, you ask? Um, this is the part where you have to start trusting your eyes. So when we're looking at a cat this way around, we all know that that's what a cat looks like. Very rarely do you see an upside down cat unless it's doing that cute like on its stomach thing. 
but this our brain sees this and automatically can go cool that's a cat we're used to seeing that the ears at the top we're used to seeing the face in this kind of um orientation with the nose down here at the bottom the eyes like this as soon as you flip the image that you're drawing no matter what it is so in this case a cat um your brain can no longer automatically make those associations with what it's seeing. So before, when you were drawing the cat, you're kind of like, okay, cool, well, the ears kind of go up here and the whiskers will kind of go down here. You're making assumptions. Now, with this upside down, you can still see that it's a cat. All the elements of a cat are still there, but not as you're used to seeing them. So you have to pay more attention to what you're drawing. And theoretically, you should make a much more accurate drawing this way. So, um, I'm going to hopefully <laughs> prove this point. So again, look at what you're drawing. Um, so instead of focusing, I would say like look for maybe a second at what you're drawing and then go back three seconds looking at your reference image. Look at what you're drawing for a second, three seconds at your reference image. So make sure that you're looking at what you are drawing, this, significantly more than your hand. But you'll find as well I hope that you have to concentrate a bit more with this one um, because the lines are not automatically making sense to you. So the aim is we're going to compare drawing one with drawing two at the end of this and see which is closer to the reference image. When I tried this before, my um, second cat was significantly better than my first cat. So normally when I do this in a class, um, we do it with a gridded page, but I'm not going to make you sit and grid out a page. <laughs> that would be cruel. <laughs> um, but you'll find if you do it with a grid as well, you'll get almost a carbon copy of the original drawing. So I'm basically making you do the slightly harder version <laughs> of it. But <laughs> makes it more fun that way and also you don't have to spend like 20 minutes drawing grids on two pages <laughs> I know we're in lockdown but ain't nobody got time for that so are you feeling a difference now with drawing are you feeling like you having to pay attention are you referencing this image more now does it does it feel different or am I just am I making stuff up <laughs> Let's see, whereabouts are his eyes in the grand scheme of this? About here? Hmm, maybe a bit further that way. I also kind of wanted everyone to use a pen, um, so if you are using a pen, yay. If you're not using a pen, also yay, totally cool. Um, but a pen is quite nice because when we work in pencil, um, the automatic uh, tendency is to grab this guy and to just erase everything. Every two seconds you make a mark and think, nope, don't like it, erase it, make a mark, nope, don't like it, erase it and you get too scared. So I kind of like working in pen because it makes you commit a bit more to what you're drawing. And also it really doesn't matter. Let's see, Rach, it feels completely different, very strange. <laughs> it does feel really odd. It's, um, it's an unfamiliar thing, which is like it shouldn't be because we all flip and know what a cat looks like, but there's just something about it. Your brain goes, nope, nope, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So if you are wanting to get more into drawing during this lockdown, I would suggest um, happily carry on working in pencil um, and continue, you know, practicing drawing in pencil, but don't erase. Get rid of your eraser, throw your eraser out, give it to a significant other <laughs> and try and actually commit to the marks that you're making. You'll find eventually you, um, are more comfortable with drawing in general if you don't constantly use an eraser. You get too dependent on it. So that's my favorite thing to do in a drawing class. If you're with a whole bunch of people, um, 
you just go around and slowly like take everyone's erasers away and put them in like a little tray at the front of the class and everyone freaks out <laughs> like what are you doing <laughs> there's genuine panic on people's faces when you take their erasers away from them um let's see I wish this pen was a bit chunkier for making the whiskers. This is sort of starting to come together, I think, on my side. I feel like this maybe looks a bit more like the original image. Um, but we shall see. So if you're in this for the long haul, I did get um, a couple of other images. Probably do one more if you want. but just in case people want to hang around for a while and want to do something else. I've set up more of these to do. But if you just want to do a cat, that's also all good. Let's see, let's get this side. This side's very sparse. I think that he's like a loose, loose tabby. Uh, doo -doo -doo little chinny thing. Okay. Let's see. Let's get his little muzzly bits in. I'm trying to loosely give us like the same time frame for this side as well so we're not spending more time. <laughs> on one orientation than the other to make it fair. Okay. But hopefully you should actively feel yourself looking at upside down Cat McGee a lot more than you did the first time round. And that's realistically how much you should be looking at anything you're drawing. So if you start going to figure drawing classes, you should really be spending most of your time looking at what you're drawing. So I'm thinking of doing maybe two more of these like actual drawing workshops during lockdown. I'm still gonna do the streams every day for the prompts, um, but I'm, I've got a couple of ideas for other workshops to do. Um, one just kind of like a, how to loosen up your drawing um, to not, you know, take it so seriously. Um, a couple that would be maybe a bit more serious, like maybe like learning about perspective or something. But again, I don't want these to be serious. Like, you know, the whole point is that we're supposed to be enjoying ourselves because the world is weird and I don't want us to feel like, you know, this is a sit down learning environment. I want you to just kind of feel like, oh yeah, cool. You know, we achieved something today. Okay, so I'm finishing my cat off. So I'm gonna give you guys one more minute <laughs> to finish yours off as well. And then we're gonna do the great flip and reveal. So I'm hoping that that's gonna be enough time. I can see my eyes a little bit off proportion wise here. Okay, I 
I'm still fiddling with mine now. So 30 second countdown is officially happening until we reveal. So actually I'm gonna write on mine just so I don't forget. So this is number two. Okay, the countdown is beginning. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I mean, I say this, but I think there's like a 40 second lag on my side. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do the reveal. So let's, let's zoom out for you. Let's see if I can get all of these guys in shot. So we have original cat. We have cat number one. And this is upside down cat. And the great reveal, cat number two. There is a huge difference. Wow. <laughs> okay, so I've made this guy's nose a little bit too long, but on the whole, I think proportion wise and most positioning wise, this one, upside down one, is significantly more like the guy in the middle. Yeah, his nose, his nose just needs to get smudged up to like maybe there. There. <laughs> we kind of push everything up by like half a centimeter. But on the whole, I would say upside down for me, at least. Oh, I didn't do the tufts. What a fool. <laughs> yeah, significantly different. It's amazing, actually. Like you don't realize how different it's going to be until you do it. How did yours turn out? Are they is there a huge difference? Which one's better? Number one, number two? Who looks more like the guy in the middle for you? I still stand by that this one for me looks significantly more like the reference image than that one. Minus the upset with the nose. <laughs> but I'm going to blame that on the fact that um, I'm about 40 centimeters away from the page. <laughs> so we'll call that the error of parallax. This is the weird part of a lag where it's like, let us wait and see if anybody anybody says something. But that's kind of the idea behind this. Let's see. My sequence proportions are far too long. I clearly went far larger at the bottom is than the top. Interesting, interesting. I think as well when it's upside down, um, there's a tendency to uh, panic a bit. <laughs> Because you are kind of unsure of what you're seeing. Is it mine is also a little bit elongated? That's quite interesting. I wonder why. Fascinating. But I'm thinking I've got another one we can do, but you need to tell me what you fancy. I've got, what have I got? I did two options. Okay, so we've got like a landscape sort of vibe with cactuses and stuff, or got a wolf, a wolf head. Do you fancy doing a quick wolf or a quick Arizona landscape? Talk to me. I, I, I sort of have a feeling I know where this is going to go, but I, I kind of hope it's going to go one way than the other way. <laughs> So we can see if we can improve on the second time round. Do I have them both printed out? I do. Okay, here we go. Those are your two options. Wolf. Landscape. Who are we gonna do? Also, thank you Shutterstock for providing these images for us. <laughs> My number two is also more cartoon-like. Hmm, interesting. Okay, we have a vote for landscape. I 
let's see. Waiting for the lag to see if anything else comes in. Okay, I think the landscape it's gonna be. So if you are working off of the link, let me get you the link quickly and post it in the chat. There you go. Right, au revoir, funny looking cats. It's been real. You can go form a gang over here. Now let us landscape it up. So this should go quite quickly. So, are we in frame? Yes, we're in frame. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing as we did last time. So focus on drawing this the right way around, flip them upside down, and then see which one is more true to the reference image. Um, I'm just gonna to commit to the large cactus first, I think. I think that's gonna be... the best starting point. He's already way too chunky. Oh well. <laughs> So these are quite nice. So these have just made use of line to create the texture on the cactus, which is pretty cool. Yeah, he's way too fat. <laughs> the use of um, silly noises. <laughs> Look how much fatter this one is. <laughs> oh well. Okay. some grass going. Okay, I've already completely ruined the proportions for this one. straight line. <laughs> it's like loosely getting there. Let's do some lines down, maybe that'll help. So I don't know if anyone is going to tune in for the um, draw along later. I think I'm going to make it relatively quickish later, just because I'm going to have been streaming for quite a long time. <laughs> um, but I think I'm going to use oil pastel. So today could be a color day. Um, and if you've seen the prompt, it's um, based off of Picasso. So we're going abstracted. So it's time to have to do something a little bit different today. So you will need a, a reference photo of someone you love and you're basically going to Picassify them. <laughs> I don't quite know what I'm going to do yet. I think I know which picture I want to use, but how it's going to work, I'm not entirely sure yet. That's too skinny.
It's quite a, a hectic. I think they're playing Dota. I don't know what they're playing. Game of something going on in the other room. I can hear a lot of huffing. <laughs> okay, let's give them a spiky top. Okay, doing this too slowly. I'm going to speed up. So I challenge you to try and draw as fast as you can. So again, try and spend maybe like one second looking at your hand drawing, three seconds at your reference image, one second at what you're drawing, three seconds at your reference image. Because theoretically you should be able to keep on drawing um, when you're still looking at this. Your memory should have enough imprinted in there to get you like, you know, an extra half a centimetre, centimetre along the way. And again, that's why things like this are important to practice, um, because it helps you to train your memory, I guess. Um, so a lot of art, a lot of um, realism, a lot of figure drawing, a lot of drawing from life relies on you trusting your eyes and trusting that they're seeing what they need to be seeing and trusting that you can remember what you've seen. Um, so we also do exercises in drawing classes where you are not allowed to look at this page or you draw blindfolded. So that's a fun one. It sounds a bit ridiculous, but it's actually really fun to do. Yeah, things are definitely getting stressful in the Dota match. <laughs> Sorry if you feel like you're a part of it. A little grass over here. Okay, so I'm gonna say maybe one minute and then we're gonna do the flip. I've been avoiding doing the sun. Let's see if I can draw a circle on camera. No pressure. <laughs> I'm normally quite good at drawing circles, but probably won't be on camera. Yep, no, that's not a very good circle. Okay, look, it's not terrible, but <laughs> it could be better. Um, okay, let's just get a bit of texture down here and then I will give you the link to the flipped image and then we can flip. I like how they've done the grass on this, it's quite satisfying to do. Like these harsh lines. It's nice and illustrative. Line is actually incredibly expressive. Um, so a lot of focus in drawing classes gets put on pencils and learning how to shade and you know which is very important do not get me wrong but I find line to be quite an underrated um, drawing tool and a lot of people as well when you sort of focus on line um, they say, oh, I can't draw lines can't draw lines and then you say well can you write and say well, yes like can you write your name so you get someone to write their name you say well you've just like done a drawing with line your your name your handwriting is technically your very own form of artistic um, expression. So anyone says they can't draw, you can draw. Okay, I think I'm gonna call that for me. So while the link is catching up, or the feed even is catching up, I'm gonna find, where have I put that? Ye oldie upside down cacti. There we go. Okay, so now for you, in the chat is the upside down landscape. So I'm gonna write number one in my sun. <laughs> Move this to the side. Flip. And let's try again. So Oh, my brain is struggling with this one. Wow, okay. Um, hmm. Maybe let's start again with the cacti. Okay, yeah, I'm finding I'm having to look at this a lot more than the other one. I need to go down a little bit. 
so I think still a bit too chunky but I think that could be better maybe she says so again we're going to try and do a similar time frame to the last one just to make sure that we're not favoring one side than the other so how is it going talk to me talk to me my lovely people Are you finding this weird is this like is this helpful in any way how are your cacti looking Oop, that's a bit squeegee going on yummy yummy lines um. oh, I've lost track of where I am what am I doing doing the mountain before the other things could have been a mistake yeah I've gone way too far oopsie we're just gonna pretend that line isn't there <laughs> you got way too excited about buying salad ingredients this morning oh I just want to go to the shops to buy some chocolate <laughs> that's all I want but we do still have enough in stock for maybe two more days so no no trips to the outside world and even then we have to decide who, who is going to get the freedom. Is it going to be me or is it going to be James who gets to, to do a jailbreak? Either way, we have to run my car. <laughs> Otherwise the battery is going to die. Nope, that's too close in. It's going to be a lot of these like weird extra lines on this one. <laughs> Oh, he has gone way too chunky. See, the problem is, I don't know about you guys, but I am exhausted today. Definitely not focusing as sort of necessarily needs to happen for doing a, a copying drawing. Absolutely exhausted today. So while I have a relatively captive audience as well, maybe I'll ask your guys' opinion. Um, so I was thinking about this last night because, um, oh dear, he's far too skinny. Um, I was chatting to someone and they were saying that um, a lot of parents with kids are struggling keeping kids entertained while they're trying to work. Um, and while I would love to do as many streams as possible, um, I'm also still working at the same time. So even two streams today is I think pushing it <laughs> if I'm 100% honest with you um, but I was trying to think what else can I do that would help um, and I think I'm going to do some free downloadable um, coloring book pages so obviously there won't be anything fancy just because I, I can't draw digitally um, but I've just done one for a book um, and I drew it by hand and scanned it in and they're using that. So I thought maybe um, I could do that. So, well, I'm, I am gonna do it. But the question is, what, this proportion wise is all wrong. Let's raise him up a little bit. Um, what should I draw? I don't really know. I mean, I guess it could be for adults as well. Um, but I just, yeah. In my mind, I think it's a really good idea. And obviously I'll make them free for download. I'm not gonna charge people, but I might um, maybe say like, if you wanna do a donation for it, but I'll make them free. I'll 
maybe like a Google Drive link, send that to people if they want them. But I'm just trying to decide what to draw. Um, what do people like to color? So if any of you have any suggestions, that would be greatly appreciated because sort of came to the conclusion this morning that I was going to do it, but now I need to decide what to do. And it's actually going to be quite a lot of work, so um, I need to plan them out first. But I don't also want to spend ages drawing stuff that people don't actually want to draw. <laughs> you know? So... I have sneaky suspicion my first one actually not I mean I'm making more mistakes on this one but maybe this one is going to be more accurate I don't know draw my plants and flowers I would love to do that I'm trying to think of a way to make them sort of like kid friendly but I guess it doesn't necessarily you don't really need to make something like super kiddie for a kid to use do you it just needs to look nice and have places to colour in. <laughs> so yeah, I'll definitely do some plants, um, for sure. I've got so many to use as reference, so that would be a pretty logical thing. I am going to do a plant of the day, but I'm only going to do it later. So the plant of the day is only going to sneak in on, um, on the draw-alongs rather than on these sort of... I mean, I guess these are workshops. Would we call these a workshop? Workshop type things? gonna hide this with that. <laughs> I don't even, did I draw that one on the last one? I don't even remember if I drew that. I have no recollection of drawing him. Okay, so I'm thinking we give ourselves two more minutes as a challenge to finish off. lost some of the I'm getting lazy and I'm not actually looking at this I'm just going like yeah, I don't really remember what this looks like that's not the point of this exercise <laughs> the point is to actually pay attention to what you're drawing it's also quite weird trying to like keep keep my arms out of the way make it educational with plant families and common names I'd love to do that I mean then maybe I should actually take it really seriously and then make it into an actual drawing book that after this could be sold. But then, I don't know, that will kind of take away the letting people download it for free thing. I don't know. But it'd be quite nice if there was an educational element to it. You know, you could lock down, colour some plants and learn something too. <laughs> Maybe I'll sneak some cats in there. I could just do like the Adventures of Rosie and Misty, basically which mostly involved Misty sleeping in various places and Rosie looking grumpy in various places. <laughs> okay. I think we're running near to the end of this. So I'm gonna do a couple more touch-ups and then in 30 seconds, let us reveal. I need to commit to doing the circle again. Kids and parents love botanicals. Okay, botanicals, that sounds good. And I think it keeps it still relatively neutral. I don't want to make anything that's gonna, I don't know. I mean, patterns are always fun as well. Maybe I'll do a mix, a mix of things, mix of plants and patterns and cats and, maybe I'll just get drawing. <laughs> maybe I'm thinking about it too much. <laughs> I think I am thinking about it too much, but okay. Ten second countdown is officially here. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. 
three, two, one. Pens are officially down. It's like Bake Off. But we don't have cake to it at the end, which is disappointing. <laughs> Oh, we don't have ingredients to make a cake either. And I really wanted to bake bread because I actually really like baking, but everyone bought all the yeast. So hopefully um, I have yeast back in stock next week. Okay, let's do the flip. So this is our original image. This is number one, which, let's see. Like it's not terrible. The mountains are quite on par. The rest is a bit sloppy. This is my upside down. And moment of truth, I'm not hopeful on this one. <laughs> it's not bad. They actually look quite similar. Hmm. Which one is, mm, I think that mountain is better. That mountain is better. That cactus is better. That cactus is better. Yeah, that's better as well. On the whole, I would say that my second one, my upside down one is better than my first one proportionally when we look at this original image. So, which which of yours looks better? Is your your first one, your right way round one, closer to this dude, or is your second one? I think this for me it's much closer. With the cat, I think actually, let's see, that was my upside down. Yeah, my upside down for me, I think, is significantly better with the cat. But I think with this, it's much of a muchness. But maybe that's because it's not a living thing. So we do have um, our brains kind of go into a weird little thing when we see something with eyes. It does something to us. I can't remember the scientific term for it, but we actually have like a weird scientific reaction to stuff with eyes. So maybe that's why. Maybe that's why it makes such a difference. I don't know. I'm going to do some research on that. But, hmm, interesting. I mean, minus all the stuff up over there and that weird little extra line that shouldn't have been there. <laughs> right. I think yeah. Oh, it's weird. I can see them on my screen now. That looks odd. <laughs> okay, so I basically just wanted to do this workshop to show you that you really need to trust your eyes. So when you're doing a drawing, especially if you're doing a copy of something or you're drawing something in real life, so say now you will go and sit outside and draw your shoe for whatever reason, trust what you're looking at. So don't just go off of your memory, go off of what your eyes are actually seeing. Don't make assumptions when you're drawing. And you should theoretically make something that looks significantly closer to your reference image than if you just kind of are like, yeah, I've got this, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Obviously that doesn't apply if you're doing abstracted work. Then the whole point is to just kind of be like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> this is when we're talking about trying to create a realistic copy of something. So if you wanna carry on doing this at home, try it with even like pictures from magazines. If you find something you like, do a grid like a two centimeter grid on a page over the image that you're doing, do it one way around, flip it, do it the other way around. And you should kind of see slowly but surely you get to train your eyes to automatically look more at this reference image. And that's basically the point I'm trying to make. It's just look, look more, look more and look deeper. Go now and look at stuff around you. If you are isolated with someone, go and stare weirdly at their face for a while. Look at how the lines of the edge of their face form. Do they have like a nice curve of their jawline? How does the shadow fall? What kind of shape are their eyes? How do they sit in the eye socket? Like go and be that weirdo that stares at them. <laughs> if you don't have someone with you and if you have a pet, go and do that with your cat and blink slowly at them and show them that you love them with slow blinks. <laughs> and if you don't have anyone, that's also good too. You're getting some time to yourself. Um, stare at some stuff. Find your favorite thing. And stare at that intently. <laughs> That's one thing um, we were taught at art school is to really like look at stuff. So I mean, you'd be given like a panda shelf to look at and you would have to look at it for a very long time. <laughs> you feel like an insane person, but in the end you actually find that you absorb a lot more of what something is. And I think that gives you a greater, greater appreciation of the world around you. <laughs> and with that, my lovely friends, I will love you and leave you. 
Um, if you're tuning in again for the workshop later, I will see you in two hours time. <laughs> um, bring some color. We're gonna go a bit wild. If you just want to tune in for this workshop, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope it was kind of helpful or you at least enjoyed yourself um, and got to have a little bit of a break from whatever you are doing in lockdown. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. I genuinely appreciate you guys tuning in. It's awesome. Um, and I will see you maybe in a few hours, maybe tomorrow, maybe in three days, maybe in six days. But stay safe and happy drawing. Bye, everyone. She says not being able to turn the stream off. <laughs> yep, it definitely won't turn off. <laughs> it has over turned into selfie mode, which is a very interesting thing to have happened. What is happening? Hello. There we go. <laughs>